Well, an interesting one that is the topic of the panel discussion is measuring the influence. I'm sure all of us would love to know more about this topic. And we have an eclectic panel of speakers to discuss this topic. So a warm welcome to our panelists. First up, Nishan Kashikar, the Country Manager, India and Gulf Tourism Australia. Anuja Mishra, Vice President and Head of Marketing, Personal Care and Hygiene, Goldrich Consumer Products Limited. Manasi Narsimhan, Vice President and Head of Marketing and Communication, South Asia Mastercard. Gurpreet Singh, CEO and Co-Founder, One Digital Entertainment. Sebastian Kodron, the Global Lead in Kartek, Inca, we've got Aditya, Emma, the, ma the Managing Director, Any Mind Group, and ladies and gentlemen, the session chair for this panel is going to be Emmy Parthasati, the CEO of Mindshare. So don't go anywhere as I uh, post this, we've got an interesting panel coming up with our Manisha Kapoor, Virat Seth, Lakshmi Bala Subramaniam, Shahid Munir, Sagar Push, Vikram Kari, and Nazir Rahman. So for now, let's uh, welcome our eminent panelists. Firstly, you all have wonderful smiles, great energy coming on the screen, and uh, a huge, huge welcome. Thank you all for joining us. How are you doing? Very well, very well. Thank you. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Over to you to moderate it further. Thank you. Great. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome. Um, it is great to hear the, uh, the earlier two sessions. Uh, and obviously, influencer marketing has been around probably since the dawn of civilization, right? I mean, from uh, Ayurvedic uh, recipes, which have uh, been uh, done by word of mouth uh, from sage to sage and written on palm leaf scrolls to possibly gladiators peddling stuff, uh, you know, in the Roman amphitheaters. And, and what's happened is that, uh, you know, obviously paid media gave it a sense of scale. Uh, and with social media, it, it, it did something which it did right at the beginning, right? It brought back a touch of one-on-one, uh, one-to-one -one kind of communication. It rekindled a dialogue. And, and with that, what we've seen is obviously spends on this medium have gone up uh, significantly. And whenever spends uh, go up significantly, immediate uh, reaction is that a lot of questions are asked. Uh, how much to spend, where to spend, on whom to spend. And most importantly, uh, what does uh, success really look like? Uh, one second, there's something with the video. Okay. And, and most importantly, you know, what does success uh, really look like? And, uh, and what uh, we have a fascinating panel here because we've got marketers who use the, uh, the power of influencer marketing. We have people who are developing solutions uh, for this need. And we have some technology experts who, have, who are actually the builders of the platforms. So I think we'll have a very good uh, perspective from three different uh, sides. Uh, so maybe let me just uh, plunge right down into it with the first uh, question which I have. Uh, and this is to the, to the marketers in the house. Uh, so maybe I'll start with uh, Anuja. Uh, hi, good to see you. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, so the first thing is... Uh, you know, how should uh, influencer marketing actually be measured in your opinion? And, and is it very different from uh, the way you would do any other form of marketing like paid media? Uh, so, you know, I'll kind of break this into two parts. I think, of course, uh, like any other medium, there is, you know, very clearly an objective that, that you know, defines the usage of an influencer. Uh, but I think broadly speaking, I'd break, you know, I'd break it into a quantitative and a qualitative aspect. Uh, you know, and I think like I also heard Rajesh, uh, you know, mention, it's very important, firstly, that the choice of influencer is fairly deliberated. You know, it's coming really out of, um, uh, you know, very core, uh, uh, you know, brand uh, philosophy and the influencer has, you know, you see some kind of a strong association of the influencer, because that really helps to amplify the authenticity and, you know, the messaging of the brand. So, uh, so I think I really see that that's the foundation of, of you know, even getting... It really helps to amplify the authenticity and, you know, the messaging of the brand. So, uh, so I think I really see that that's the foundation of, of you know, even getting... I think that is, uh, yeah, if the team can mute, please. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, I think, uh, uh, however, from a KPI lens, you know, I'd say that uh, quantitatively, uh, you know, you, you usually would look at a set of influencers to give you a much wider reach, uh, you know, uh, amongst their community. And I think from that standpoint, uh, the way I would at least, you know, the way we've been evaluating a lot of our uh, influencer campaigns is to look at the kind of outreach within a relevant uh, set of communities and cohorts. 
and i think equally uh, uh, you know getting a positive uh, you know rub off uh, on the brand uh, with respect to the uh, authenticity of the influencer and the content you know so if the influencer is seen to be an expert or you know an uh, or somebody who's allied to that that specific uh, area it uh, you know it sort of definitely helps in terms of a uh, amplification and almost a multiplier on your content getting shared and spoken of absolutely i think i think the outreach part which you mentioned is is so critical um nishant uh, you you're in the tourism business right and and there are so many things that influence it from covid to uh, uh, you know uh, to economy in general and and influences obviously play a key part so what is it that you have seen uh, and you know how would you measure success in this space all right first and foremost a big hello to each one of you all the fellow panelists and all the marketeers on this wonderful friday afternoon uh part of to answer your question uh, specifically i guess one of the values that all the marketeers should have is the fact that we should treat every dollar as it as if it was our own and as custodians of a brand we are really accountable for every dollar that we spend so be it the taxpayers the shareholders or the vcs or the investors so because you know every dollar that we spend we are really truly accountable for that and yes influencer marketing should definitely be measured like how we've been measuring every other media uh, to answer your specific question on what are we doing current during current uh, during the current pandemic i guess it's extremely important for us to maintain that uh, resonance and that top of mind recall for for brand australia despite the fact that the borders have been closed for almost 18 months and and god knows when the borders are going to reopen again so it's all about maintaining as as anuja said you know that that qualitative aspect about the brand in terms of awareness consideration intention that appeal so as soon as the borders open maybe i'll i'll be traveling to australia so uh, all the work that we're doing during this lockdown phase is in terms of that social and content amplification using the power of advocacy using some of our influencers to ensure that australia australia remains top of mind uh and in terms of you know the metrics i mean certainly there there are no arrivals there are no conversion at this point of time so it's purely based on what kind of engagement that we are seeing what kind of reach that we are seeing amongst our influencers and then uh you know what is the kind of engagement that we are seeing on the on various platforms so yes that's that's what we've been doing during this phase great great i know tough times but uh, but i think the influencers are really helping keep australia uh, top of mind for you uh, absolutely you know uh, mansi uh, mans mastercard of course is is in a very interesting uh, uh, space right i mean uh, people buy cards from the banks and and you're at the back powering that entire ecosystem uh, and uh, and so from your perspective i mean what really is the role which influencers have played for you and how do you measure success absolutely uh, you're right uh, maps this is a it's a very interesting space we are a consumer brand and a b2b business but i think influencers play a very crucial role in differentiating and in amplifying what the cards can be used for because let's face it not one person on earth gets up saying what do i spend on today oh let me take out my card i just can't wait to spend but they are interested in dining in shopping and nishan to your point in the fullness of time travel so if we amplify that through influencers who are not necessarily celebrities but experts in their own right i mean in the earlier session we saw uh, rajesh and perfetti using chefs uh, at a time of the lockdown we've had some incredible results by showing those passion points and how mastercard and a bank can enable those so in terms of how we measure it and i think the difference between paid advertising and this is advertising you test the creative separately and you look for reach separately in influencer marketing the two are interlinked uh, so i think to me getting the influencer right getting somebody who resonates with the audience is well worth the trade off of that extra reach because the engagement you get is what really drives success according to me absolutely agreed uh, and and it's it's interesting that you spoke about experts rather than celebrities uh, because the entire aspect of you know what makes for credible and uh, communication and, and dialogue more importantly rather than uh, the one way kind of uh, uh, space and therefore your metric itself changes in that sense uh, based on the kind of uh, you know influencer you use absolutely i think having having spoken to the uh, to the marketers i thought i'll go to the uh, uh, to the solution providers uh, uh, you know we have goodfree we have 
Sebastian and Aditya here who are, who are on the kind of the other side of the spectrum, if I can look at it. And I'm sure all of you are often asked this question on, uh, on ROI, you know, and, and when it comes to ROI itself, you know, uh, different people consider different parameters because what do we mean by return? What does return actually mean? And how do you calculate it? So, so what is your biggest priority as solution providers when it comes to providing that, that concept of ROI? So maybe I'll start with you, Gurpreet. Hi. Uh, I think, it, I mean, before even, I mean, we can give a solution. It, it, it comes from what's the brand brief is, right? I mean, if the brand, the marketing campaign that they're doing is, the, if the brief is, if the objective is branding, if the objective is association, objective is reach, conversion, uh, enabling a transaction, right? This is what a brand is looking for. And in most of the cases, is it, it is a uh, it is a, a combined effort of, of, of the brand awareness and the transactions also. I think basis that uh, um, you can pick up the formulas of looking at how, how do you want to look at a uh, engagement metrics, CPA metric, you can look at a CPV metric, or look at, you can look at a CPA, uh, what's the transaction uh, that you have taken up. I think basis, the objective uh, of the brand which comes to us, that's where we can provide the solution. With the social commerce now becoming the next big thing with all these platforms, Instagram, YouTube, integrating the transactions, uh, working on the solution where they're integrating transaction modules within their own platforms, you will see a CPA being played as big, big role because you can directly tra uh, track a transaction action being done from their handles otherwise. But I think from, uh, from an influencer's point of view, it's not very evident to look purely from a transaction point of view because it's, it's it, if they play an important role in passively creating traction higher up in the funnel by starting a thought process that can lead to a transaction. Now from an ROI, you can track it by SEO, SCM, Google search, but there's a highly likelihood that uh, influencer might have a played a big role in for them to take that decision when they landed on the Google search. Right, right, right. So I think I think a lot of different metrics there, and uh, and uh, I think the need to architect a solution which addresses the the right metrics becomes becomes so important. Uh, Sebastian, you're a, you're a technology person, right? You you build these platforms, uh, and 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 when you look at this platform and the platform of Inca which you've created, uh, what is the kind of uh, ROI which uh, which it aims to give to to consumers and and on the flip side perhaps to the influencers as well i mean how does it give them the kind of return they are looking for and how do you build a platform like that hi everyone um well first uh, roi is uh, uh, I, I think it's uh, it's a notion that uh, will eventually be reached uh, through uh, data analysis uh, it's complicated to, uh, to, to get and to measure, uh, but uh, there are uh, ways. Uh, so for example, uh, I, I could tell you, um, uh, if you're capable of measuring or creating a cluster of content that uh, performed very well, uh, and you know they actually uh, impacted uh, the brands positively, uh, either uh, in terms of awareness, in terms of uh, consideration, in terms of sales, um, then uh, you can analyze uh, whatever patterns uh, relate to this content in this cluster and, uh, and build a recipe for success. And that uh, will be uh, truly uh, uh, describing what an ROI will be because you could, you could actually uh, try uh, replicate this recipe for success and uh, and uh, and improve the output of your campaigns. So that's uh, that's the, how we where we're going us um, in a, in a data analysis, and uh, we're trying to learn from what is working, uh, and uh, and extract uh, the the patterns of the recipe for success. Now for um, for measuring, uh, we can easily uh, get a media value out of uh, any post uh, from any creator. Uh, this is because uh, we have a, a price database uh, from everyone, not from everyone. We have a price database from those we have worked with. And uh, from this price database, uh, we can actually uh, model uh, what should be the price from the others. Uh, in the same way, we can model what will be uh, the expected uh, uh, performance of when eBay post uh, for, for your brand. Uh, and um, with that, we can actually improve uh, the output uh, of a campaign. And this is, this is why we sell on performance on, on in, in Inca is because we have the ability 
of identifying who's, who will do well for your brand and therefore deliver more, uh, improving the ROI. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, Aditya, I think uh, uh, in terms of the solution which you offer, uh, you, you obviously come from the background of, uh, of gaming and, uh, uh, and you know, now uh, the, some of the uh, biggest influencers are also uh, coming from that, that kind of space. So what has been your perspective in terms of, uh, you know, driving ROI for brands uh, on your platforms? Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, question, Maps. I hope everyone is, uh, is safe and sound. Um, I think uh, it, it, it is very important that we first and foremost understand data and the, the data structures that are available. Given the, given the platforms have walled gardens, it, it becomes essential that there are enough and more trained models that allow um, us to, in certain ways, ascertain what the performance output should be. And only then can we go back to a brand and advise them in terms of what the key metric should be. Um, to the marketeers who alluded a little while earlier that it is a good trade-off uh, in terms of reach versus a higher engagement, because then you're looking at the qualitative part of how the, um, the influencers that you've chosen have delivered for that brand. Um, we, we do come across a lot of marketeers who do have questions uh, owing to the fact that they come from uh, having you know, worked within paid media, uh, they try to super transpose the, um, the paid media um, KPIs onto, onto influencer marketing. But I think it's what's most important is uh, you know, owning relevance, um, understanding what, what click to conversion ratios would be. Um, performance metrics are very, very important given the pandemic. I think if anything that has been um, uh, expedited is the, the need of the R being brands wanting you know should be should have their e-commerce shops and and we are able to track that we are able to track how influencers are able to then drive um, relevant um, you know target audiences onto a particular brand and I also like what Gurpreet said um, you know it is very clearly the uh, how do you use the nature of the demographics of these influencers from a nano to a micro to a macro to a top star uh, if you're looking at an awareness of course it goes to a to a celebrity to a top star but you know when you're looking at uh, you know, bottom of the funnel conversion, you need to have a large ecosystem of signed up influencers on platforms that yet you can then, in, you, know, you know, initiate a, a campaign with. And then you cross tie back that with what part of uh, influencer demographics sit, sits within the awareness process and what of them sits within the, within the influencer and nano and micro influencers at the bottom of the funnel, right? So for us, I think it's, it's a uh, need of the R is A in this, uh, in this, new creator economy where D2C is becoming important, where creators are themselves becoming you know, uh, merchandisers themselves too. Uh, they want to reach out to their um, you know, captive, captive followers. I think brands are leveraging that and we see that um, when we go back with, the, with any advice, uh, it is to do with what are the metrics that the client is you know, looking at and how do we drive that? Right. I think I think you raise an interesting point because on one hand you have this alphabet soup if I can call it like you know so you had CPM and then you had CPS and CPRP and CPA and you know you think of a you think of a letter in the alphabet and you can put it after CP and you'll get something right and uh, and the latest of course in this arena is uh, uh, cost per reach or uh, you know cost per uh, engagement and and so on and so forth which are the new metrics which are which are coming up. Now, on one hand, you have what I would call as output metrics, and then there are outcome metrics. So I'm going back to the marketers and saying, how do you, how do you really balance between the output metrics, which are more around the cost deployment uh, and, and perhaps the numeric reach and, and the outcome metrics, which are more about the end business outcome, you know, and, and how do you find influencers actually working for you in that context? So maybe... Uh, Mansi, why don't you you start off on that? Absolutely. So I think uh, I think as everyone has mentioned, it really depends on the objective. So I'll give you a couple of uh, examples where we've used influencers. So 
One has been when we were launching with certain banks, uh, cards targeted at millennial audiences. And obviously millennials kind of live and die uh, on, uh, you know, on, in the digital world. So again, it was about identifying those passion points, whether it's gaming, whether it's music, getting those uh, experts to talk about how convenient the card makes their life. And the metric there was how many leads the bank was able to get versus other marketing channels that we used and versus channels that the bank also deployed. A different use that we've had, uh, so that's a very clear sort of measurable metric, so cost per whatever that, that we could put. But I think equally important is um, in the digital payments world is to reassure cardholders that digital payments are absolutely safe and reliable because unfortunately, media tends to blow completely out of proportion any odd breach that happens or to educate cardholders, you know, don't share your OTP, for example, that we found works very, very well through influencers, as opposed to the brand saying, you know, here are 10 things you need to do to stay safe. And we very recently put out a post with uh, Ayushman Khurana from another bank saying exactly this, share happiness, don't share your OTP. And qualitatively, we found the, the awareness of, the, uh, of those messages goes up uh, significantly with influencers more than say direct to consumer paid media. So that's really been two examples, one very quantitative lead generation, one more education and overall awareness and different influencers used for both. Very, very interesting. I mean, I think, uh, so you're saying that they, the two kind of coexist, right? Uh, in, the, in the world of influencers, you see, you see both ends of the, of the spectrum coexisting. Absolutely. Uh, Nishant, how about some examples from your side in terms of uh, kind of uh, managing this dichotomy of uh, output and outcome uh, when it comes to measurement and metrics? That, that's an interesting one because uh, at Tourism Australia, before we embark on any influencer uh, engagement activity, what we create is an influencer engagement score. Uh, and what I mean by an influencer engagement score is we evaluate seven R's. And the seven hours primarily comprised of reach. What is the traditional reach? What is the social media reach? International reach in case of if you're having some global uh, influencers as a part of your uh, you know, advocacy panel, what are the connections that they have within the industry? So reach is very important. The rise of the celebrity, like what stage of success is that influencer currently at? I mean, is he a key opinion leader or a subject matter expert? Say on, if you want to promote a food and wine centric uh, theme, then you need to have somebody who has gained sufficient uh, you know, respect and recognition in that particular field. A reputation plays an important role as well of that particular celebrity, because ultimately we are managing a reputation of a nation and we can't go wrong. Uh, you know, you can, you can possibly make mistakes when handling a brand, but if you're managing a reputation of a nation or a country like Australia, I guess uh, that plays a very important role. Relationship also plays an important role. Like we would ideally work with somebody who has lived in Australia, traveled to Australia on a holiday, has got some friends and relatives in Australia, or maybe studied in an Australian university as a part of an Australian alumni. So that relationship with Australia counts as, as much. Uh, the next R is about re resonance and relevancy. You know, uh, is it relevant to our category? You know, do they have a credible and authentic tone of voice uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, inviting them to our, for an uh, advocacy campaign? The most important R is the risk. I mean, have, have they been associated in any previous controversy or have they been associated in any unacceptable behavior? Because that can make or break your brand as well or your campaign as well. And finally, the last R is all about the expected ROI that we've all been talking about. What are those uh, industry benchmarks for that reach? What is the industry engagement rate that we're looking at and whether we can exceed those, those metrics? So a combination of these R's will give you an influence the engagement score. If the score is about a 70, 80 percentile, you would go ahead and work with that particular celebrity. Now, in terms of the output or the outcome, as you, as you rightly mentioned, that how do you measure the outcome of any activity? One is obviously the campaign metrics, you know, the views, the engagement, the shares, the likes, uh, and maybe the cost of customer acquisition in case you're doing a tactical campaign. But equally important are the brand health metrics, which comprise of maybe uh, awareness for the brand, you know, the consideration and intention, the fashionability or appeal for, for the brand. Uh, and this can be done through various brand lift surveys as well. You know, we do a pre and a post campaign analysis. And finally, you know, the reason why we all exist are to achieve the strategic KPIs in terms of arrivals, the visitation, the, the spend, the contribution, the repeat travel percentage, and the market share of, of your destination. So 
three levels of metrics, the campaign metrics, the brand metrics, and the strategic KPIs is how we would evaluate your, your any influencer activities. Love, love the seven hour uh, uh, framework, Nishant. Uh, I just, I was just reading a book which says if you, if someone says I have three things, three things to say, then immediately people will start noting down point one, point two, point three, rather than if you just said those three things. So, so I think you proved the point. I noted it down. So, so that's that's great. Uh, you know, I think uh, 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 Anuja, moving on to you, uh, how how do you see this? Uh, uh, have you kind of resolved this dichotomy between? The, the outcome and the output metrics, if I could call it that. I think to be very honest, I think the FMCG industry would be possibly one of the last to, uh, you know, resolve this outcome versus uh, output uh, metric. And one of the reasons for that maps is that, you know, at any given point in time on any brand campaign, you would potentially have a lot of mass interventions running in parallel with, you know, let's say your content or influencer marketing pieces. And I think therefore it's it's important, uh, you know, like I think both Mansi and Nishant mentioned, it's important to be one very clear of, uh, you know, what your brand agenda is. And I'll try and sort of explain this through two examples, uh, you know, of the last one year. So, uh, you know, just very much at the start of COVID, uh, you know, we got into the massive hygiene category, uh, you know, and we launched, you know, about 12 formats of, you know, various hygiene products over a span of about 60 to 70 days. And, and Godzic Protect was a relatively, I'd say, new brand, uh, you know, up against uh, some stalwart brands in the hygiene, uh, uh, you know, sector. And, you know, why we, of course, got the trust uh, of, of brand Godzic, it was also important for us to, you know, take the promise of the brand across all these formats to, uh, to consumers, uh, you know, through a product demonstration, uh, you know, through really sort of, uh, you know, taking the product more physically uh, out to them and not just relying on uh, you know mass uh, media because there were multiple formats and uh, you know it was obviously not possible to go tv out on all of them and uh, uh, you know there was also the time just by the way when there were several uh, uh, you know companies that got into hygiene i think you know it was clearly a race to uh, you know no finish line at that point and there were a lot of large celebrities that many organizations had actually gone in for but you know, one of the things that we had been hearing, you know, from consumers constantly was, you know, this feeling of vulnerability that we were all going through, and how much more important, uh, you know, your your next door neighbor and someone in your family became as a voice of reason, you know, and as almost as an advocate of reason in your life, and that's why we decided that you know we were actually not going for a short high burst, you know, high amplification influencer model, you know, rather we sort of create an army of moms, you know, mothers who are fairly active in social media, but you know, they're, they're ones who have, you know, who are respected, who are looked up to, you know, whether it be about the, the choice of brands, or, you know, whether it be about, you know, especially young mothers, I think, you know, that's a very vulnerable group, uh, and, you know, even more at that point. And, uh, you know, we also realize that, uh, you know, we needed these influencers to continue to talk about the product, about you know the 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 features uh, for a longer period of time, you know, and and therefore it wasn't just an outreach number, but it was also about the number of times and the, or the frequency, uh, you know, of of conversations that they were having in their close groups or uh, uh, you know in their circles. Uh, so that was definitely one usage. And you know what, that's definitely done maps, you know, it's very difficult to put our finger and say that we of course have an outreach number, right, but it's very difficult to put our finger and say that, you know, it's only this influencer program that let's say helped us to bring our imagery parameters upwards. But but what we certainly know is that, you know, in a lot of tier two towns, you know, where, where let's say, you know, there is there is even more, I'd say, a deliberation, right, on choosing a brand. Uh, we've seen very definitive impact of the fact that who you heard the brand, uh, you know, from uh, was there was a lot of mention about, uh, uh, you know, these this army of moms and, and so on. So I think that's that's one usage, right? The other usage that I'll very quickly touch upon is, you know, uh, our flagship brand Synthol. And that's a brand that, you know, sort of advocates exploration and travel. And here we were in the midst of COVID where, you know, you could do anything but travel, right, sitting at home. Uh, and interestingly, you know, this is a time when usually brands would say, you know, there's no point creating content around travel because, you know, it won't really sort of result in conversions. Uh, but, you know, we said this is actually the best time to create a community, you know, because 
there's a very strong feeling of nostalgia around travel you know that's really something that's people are almost doing that vicariously i think you know pretty much everyone was posting their past travels or their last travels on their social accounts and we said you know this is a great time to actually create a community of explorers which is going to be you know all travel influencers none of them you know potentially very large known faces but you know each of them actually uh, you know very passionate travel enthusiasts you know and the and the, i i think what it did, did for the brand is of course you know it got us a 250% you know over the industry kind of engagement rates and so on but what it really helped us do is that you know it built a very strong empathy um you know from the brands uh, point of view to that of of consumers to say that hey you know you're not the only one who's kind of you know stuck at home here are these people you know who are passionate travelers and you know let's understand from them how are they kind of you know rekindling uh, you know their their passion for travel or you know how are they sort of going back and you know reliving those moments uh and uh, you know so aside this entire engagement i think aside the fact that we created brilliant content with these influencers i think it really upped the the brand imagery uh, uh you know and the brand association with exploration and travel even more than maybe a non covid year so i thought those were two you know fairly interesting usages of uh, of influencer marketing very very interesting and you raise a very valid point which i want to shift back to the to the solution providers Uh, so maybe sebastian i'll i'll just quickly start with you uh, uh, anuja raised the point of uh, almost attribution if i could call it that right how much can you attribute to what the influencer has done uh, to the to the kind of end outcome uh, which the brand is seeking uh, so from the point of view of devising the solution uh, how do you look at that i mean in terms of what is the actual end uh, attribution if i could call it that well um I, I i don't have seven r but i have about 100 data points to make this connection so don't take a pen it will take a while uh but yeah what we what we looking at um is basically uh uh measuring uh the the influencers matching with a brand and uh what we looking at is understanding how an influencer can match a brand in terms of content so the brand has territories the influencer has topics and there is certainly certainly a, a matching there we are also looking at the audience the brand as a target audience the influencer uh has a followers audience and then we can definitely match it uh, in the same manner uh, a brand has a digital persona uh, they have a typical kind of profile and the, the, the influencer may have or may not have this profile so you will also establish a matching there Uh, a brand has objective uh, uh, influencer can answer this objective by the type of content he, he is creating for example uh, if you want to generate a awareness perhaps better to work with a celebrity but if you want to write create consideration you need to work with somebody who is specialized uh, in this kind of uh, topic and has created a lot of content about it and is very engaging when it comes to this kind of, of content so we're looking at uh um all of this uh in order uh, to make sure we select the right person and that we're going to get uh, something great in return because you know um if you only look a little bit uh, just as uh, we were talking about maybe uh, just as the audience uh, maybe uh, uh, the reputation is not good uh, you also need to look at it so um to me um uh, it 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 requires a lot of intelligence and and i mean by that artificial intelligence to be able uh, to eventually match the the, the creators uh, with a brand and that's that's where we we have to go um and uh doing it manually is not possible and uh which is why with with data platforms are absolutely necessary nowadays uh because uh, without it uh, you won't be able to know who to work with uh and and what to do thank you thank you i think ai ai coming into influencer marketing is perhaps the last bastion of what was once a, a very right brain and intuitive kind of selection so so that's an interesting uh, space goodpreet your thoughts on this um i think uh, sebastian has covered uh, the relevance of having the data pointers ai tech right and honestly we have been doing it as one digital entertainment since last 8 9 years right and we obviously study all of this data but i think beyond that 
uh, now is the time when a lot of brands have started thinking and like anuja mentioned it it was very refreshing and encouraging um, to hear from a brand point of view uh, the philosophy that we carry that it's not always about uh, uh, that it's not always about doing a short story it's, it's not always about doing a post but building long term communities building long term influencing audiences over a long term uh, period to uh, to measure the trust measure the credibility because i don't know which is the data, data point uh, via which you can measure credibility or, or the trust or the actual influence uh, by by somebody i think that's where a lot of brands uh, and our pitch to brands is that beyond just doing a transaction can we look at a way to build more strategic partnership uh, with the influencer over a period of months and hopefully year and a lot of them now have started realizing the impact and a better roi for that uh, there are some influencers whom we have worked with a few brands where we have done a transaction or two they have tested waters and then they have locked the influencers for a year or two years or there are even three year deals uh, that we have locked uh, with uh, and and the good part is because we are just not a transactional agency we manage their artist business we know their 12 months we know what's going to happen in their life after 6 months 7 months what are the movies what are the projects what are the web series they are doing throughout this year and potentially next year also so it's very easy for us to integrate organically and the content into the lifestyle of the influencer and that's where you will um, build the trust yeah, when 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 your product uh, is integrated very very organically within the lifestyle otherwise people call the bluff right why tv ads why radio ads um, i mean there's always a debate that uh, it's a very on the face marketing does it work or doesn't work but why influencer marketing is creating that dent in the ecosystem is is because there is a way you can organically integrate the content without just throwing the product uh, on the face and i think um, like like nishan mentioned um, there are some industry where it will be very easy there are certain industries where it will be a task you need you need more specialized set of people to integrate brands uh, within the content like why tourism loves influencers right because influencers also love traveling like everyone else right so there are very those are very very organic integrations that can happen where uh, i don't think nishant has to fight with influencers multiple number of times that you have not done this story this post most of the times i'm sure he gets more than what he asked for right because they, because it's so integrated organically uh, into what they are looking for i think that's where uh, the right set of influencers and also understanding of what they want to do giving them a little bit of freedom also and building long term mm-hmm. partnerships that's where the actual roi will come um otherwise it will be just fancy alphabets in in the slides in in our uh, preview meetings aditya your builds on this i think i think uh, well well i completely concur with both sebastian and what kripit have shared i i'd like to just uh, since i have a captive audience of both uh, mansi and anuj i'll start with mansi's industry first and then probably go to anuj and give those examples in terms of how relevant an attribution platform could be you know and uh, i the you know Wall Street never thought uh, that you know finance as a category has never been high in terms of influencer marketing. You know, finance is probably languishes down in the the twelfth or the thirteenth quarter in terms of uh, how influencers are looked at, right? And uh, to the point that could be made that it is very important to have relevant uh, you know influencers. You know, guys like Austin Hankwitz. I'm sure you guys don't even might not have even heard of him, but he uh, is uh, currently owning uh, earning more. than what an average banker work makes in the in, in wall street yeah uh, he a lot of robo advisor apps have now started to kind of look at this gentleman to see how does he become the new crop of finfluencers they call them right so which is where is he doing credible content is he creating relevant uh, insights into the actual product and the brand that he's pushing has he utilized that product or is he just doing it as as a as a paid post how well is he does he understand investing how well does he understand tax harvesting how well does he does he understand so i think credibility kind of comes in there uh, i agree with gurpreet even i don't have a measure i don't have an, a, a three lettered uh, you know random alphabet to say that oh this is what credibility comes in for to to what uh, i think what anuja said is probably a, a little tougher you know attribution when uh, of of what uh, roi has been generated by an influencer when mass campaigns are happening right in ca- countries like india indonesia philippines these are countries where uh, cost per reach is lowest in in television still remains to be right now and while i'm a, di- a digital guy myself i do understand the the inequities of how paid media works uh, what is most important however you know in the case of cpg would be then if you you know and looking at the bottom of the funnel you're looking at uh, ways of uh, running live campaigns um, you know with with uh, influencers who are given unique codes and those unique codes can be a community of those influencers are chosen then unique codes are then tracked 
uh, can be tracked both at point of sale, so it could be an online to an offline track, versus an online to an online track, where while the live uh, show is happening for one and a half hours, two hours, and you're, you're using multiple influencers who may have different strategic insights uh, for a particular brand, you know, and they and a mother could come take a shot at uh, the, the a protector, a hygiene brand versus a metrosexual dad versus a uh, elder brother to a to a uh, you know bunch of siblings to an uncle uh, to a grandmother. So there are ways in which you can run this, right? And then track that back to the unique codes that have been given. So an attribution per se uh, can then be tracked uh, maps. It is doable. We've done those uh, campaigns, uh, you know, in the Philippines and in Indonesia, we've run, we run them multiple number of times. And, uh, and then again, uh, I think it's very important to subscribe to an ex expert, very important to then go out to, uh, you know, guys like Seb, guys like uh, Gurpreet, who, who, know, who know the data side, data insights, right? Uh, training a model, understanding how, uh, AI works. It, it takes a whole lot of data sets to train that model, right? Modeling, modeling something is not something about manually ass assessing, uh, you know, a finger in the air approach towards who this influences looks good. So maybe he should be the one doing doing the job for us, right? Uh, I wish that was that were true, right? So for us, I think that is that that it kind of boils down to that uh, as a, as a description. Thank you so much. I think I'm rapidly running out of time on this panel, so. I thought I'll end it by asking the three marketers in the room in 30 seconds each, if you had a, a wish list or if you had a G, you know, a, a lamp which you could rub and uh, a genie would pop out and you would have to ask them one thing about what it is that you would like more measurability or accountability from influencer marketing, what would you say? So uh, Nishan, maybe I'll start with you. I guess uh, to each his own, it all depends on the campaign objectives, the purpose, the reason why we are uh, appointing an influencer. And then, as I said earlier, you know, there are three things that we'll measure based on the campaign metrics, the brand metrics, and the overall strategic KPIs, whether the influencer or the group of influencers have made any effort or other their contribution to, or, to the overall success or shifting the brand metrics uh, for, your, uh, for your respective product. Great. Thank you. Uh, move on to Anuja. I think to the to the three genies who are on the call here with us, I just say that I think what will be interesting for marketers, maps, is to understand various models of influencer marketing, right? And they could therefore they can be a longer term advocacy model, a shorter term quick burst. But I think what will be interesting is just to understand, you know, there are fundamentally three or four large objectives that brands would have. You know, it's it's either about building awareness or driving consideration, or let's say, you know, driving a certain uh, you know bottom of the funnel kind of a conversion. It'll be interesting to just understand models, um, uh, you know, and a very quick reckoner, I think, almost of sorts, so that we're not kind of, you know, learning by trial, but there is some science to it. And my sense is with all the work that's happened on influencer marketing in the country over the last six to seven years, I think there's enough data points to kind of put that down. So, yeah, so I'm not asking for much, really. There. Just, just, just the playbook, that, which, which tells you exactly <laughs> what you want. Thoughts, right? To just say these are the five or six ways that you can effectively utilize and measure. Great. And the last word goes to Mansi. Well, I uh, absolutely echo what Anuja said. I mean, absolutely wish we could have a plug and play model. But the other thing, and again, personal experience uh, is I think uh, as a community, we need to convince others that influencer marketing is not about how many times your brand is mentioned in a post. I mean, I've had when we work with banks and even, you know, with several others, they say, oh, my brand needs to be mentioned at least 20 times. And like, no, this is not advertising. So I think as this, uh, you know, this part of marketing evolves, that will happen. But that could be one of my, uh, you know, points of a wish list. Correct. Knock off the words, make the logo bigger from this at least. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you all so much. I mean, it's been a pleasure being on this panel with you all. And I would uh, hand it back to, uh, to the team at E4M. Thank you. Thanks, Partha. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.